coming up next on the Apostolic Connection. And when you get prayer back in your tabernacle, you're able to stand and look at that mountain and say, Mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Mountain, you've ruled my life. You've ruled my joy. You've ruled my marriage. You've ruled my children. You've ruled my life. But Mountain, I am putting prayer back in my tabernacle. to the Apostolic Connection, the weekly televised service of the First Apostolic Church here in Maryville, Tennessee. I'm Pastor Kenneth Carpenter, choir, church congregation. Let's give those that are watching today a great big apostolic hand clap offering. We are so delighted to have you joining with us today. In just a few moments, I'm going to be coming with a message about a fruitless fig tree, a prayerless tabernacle, and a mountain in your way. But before I do, would you worship the Lord with the sanctuary choir of the First Apostolic Church? Lord, will you take my heart as I surrender to your will? I confess you are my righteousness until you move me. me
chapter 11. Begin reading at verse number 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, and he, Jesus, was hungry, seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily or by chance, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of the figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of the hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they come to Jerusalem. Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Verse 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curseth is withered away. Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. Verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. You may be seated. God bless you for standing in honor of the reading of the Word of God. For just a few moments today, I want to take you on a little journey that happened in the life of Jesus Christ. I do believe that the fig tree, the prayerless temple, and the mountain all go together. The Bible says that as Jesus was on His way to Jerusalem, that he, in the man humanity part of himself, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, or it was off the beaten path, as we would say, it was not on the side of the road, it was afar off, seeing a fig tree with leaves, he came if by chance he would find something. The leaves, the foliage, spoke to him of the possibility of fruit. We know as he left the path to Jerusalem and went to the fig tree that when he got there, it was a fruitless fig tree. He was very disappointed. He was flesh and hungry. And he became disappointed to the, to the level that he spoke and cursed the fig tree. He spoke to the fig tree that day and he said that no man would ever eat any fruit of thee forever. He cursed the fig tree. He made his way to the temple. He made his way to that house of worship that should be a house of prayer. It should be a house where people had gathered together to seek the face of God for their problems in their lives. A place of prayer, of communing with their God. And he finds that they have changed the purpose for the house of God. It is no longer a place men and women come and seek God through prayer. It has become a place of exchanging of currency. 
It has become a place of buying doves and buying sacrifices. It has become a place, it went from a place of prayer to a place of commerce, a place of merchandise. We know that when Jesus entered the temple, that he acted out of character because he began to turn tables over. He began to take a whip and drive animals and man out of the temple. And he gave a strong rebuke that this house should be called the house of prayer. But you have made it. Now notice, he didn't say a place of merchandise. He said, you have made it a den of thieves. You have made it a place that thieves inhabit. And uh, the Bible says that he taught them. He left that evening. And the next day, as they were making their way back, they passed by the fig tree. And as they passed by the fig tree, Peter, I believe it was, pays close attention to the fig tree that 24 hours previous was green with foliage and life but fruitless. And Peter looks and says, Master, look at the fig tree. For it had dried up and withered away from its root, by its roots. I can see a tree no longer standing erect. I see a tree laying on the ground, dried up from the roots. Jesus, in giving them an explanation, said, You just simply need to have faith in God. What you cannot understand. You need to simply turn it over to me. You need to have faith in God. And then he began to speak about mountains. He said that if you had faith, that you could say to a mountain, be removed. And it would be cast in to the sea. And then he went into the subject of prayer. He said, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you're going to receive. And I read all of this and I believe in my heart that there is a connection between the fruitless fig tree, the prayerless tabernacle, and the mountain that is in the way. I believe today that we have fruitless, unproductive, unjoyful, unsatisfying lives because simply we have lost the art A prayer. We have a prayerless tabernacle. In your body is called a tabernacle. And any time there is prayerlessness in the tabernacle, there will be fruitlessness in your life. You will be, and as a matter of fact, of all the people that you and I could want to please, of all the people, church, those of you watching by television and the world wide web, of all the people in this world, we would want to please. At the top of the list must be Jesus. We have got to live lives that are pleasing to Jesus Christ. I want my life to be pleasing to Him. Now, when He came to the fruitless fig tree, He is very much displeased because this tree is a distraction. And he curses the fig tree. And he gets to Jerusalem. And he finds the prayerless tabernacle. And he he drives out of the tabernacle the den of thieves. This place that he said, it's a den, a hiding place for thieves. Do you know that when you and I do not believe in nor trust God enough to pray, we are the losers. I don't care what busy schedules we got and what chores we think have to be completed. Anytime we rob, anytime we neglect the prayer that should be prayed in our body, we become a thief of the blessings of Almighty God. Oh my, 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 I look around here today and I see men and women who are living far beneath their joy and privileges in God because you have allowed other things to rob what God wanted to pour on you in a great abundance. Prayerlessness is a thief. 
And then Jesus, when he had cursed that fig tree, and the disciples said, Master, we can't explain it. How can one thing be green one day and withered by the roots in 24 hours? He said, you just simply need to have faith in God. Can I tell you today that God is the only one that can work very fast, quickly in your lives. Many of you are faced with fruitless things. You're faced with disappointment in your life. But if we could turn our lives to God in the next few moments, God is able to do a 24-hour turnaround for you and I. In 24 short hours, there was a distraction there that kept Jesus from His trek to Jerusalem. And 24 short hours later, that distraction was withered by the roots. I've got good news that I want to share with this congregation today and TV audience. If we can learn how to pray, God will go to work for us very quickly. If we can learn to turn our tabernacle into places of prayer, it's possible to wake up with a weight on your shoulder and go to bed with a praise on your lips because if we can turn it over to God in prayer, Just have faith in God. How am I going to get my joy renewed? Have faith in God. How things going to be restored in my life? Just have faith in God. He said, I say to you, this mountain, I wouldn't ask you to raise your hand today, but how many men and women in this place have mountains in your life that you just seem can't, you can't get over it, and you can't get around it, you can't get under it. You just got mountains in your life. You know why there's mountains there that can't be moved? Is because there's a prayerless tabernacle. And anytime there's a prayerless tabernacle, there's a mountain in your life that can't be moved. And every marital problem, financial problem, every family problem that you'll ever have, friend, can all be traced back to a prayerless tabernacle. Every disappointment we've ever been given to God, every, every time we've ever disappointed God, it's pointed back to the tabernacle got prayerless. Every mountain that we face, everything that consumes us, every, that mountain that woke some of you up. No, 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 let me back up. That mountain that put some of you all to bed last night. That mountain that some of you got up in the middle of the night and thought about that mountain. That mountain that you thought about the first thing when you got up this morning and several times during the day. That mountain will never be removed by all the fretting and all the worrying and all the talking and all the friends. That mountain will never be removed until you put prayer back in your tabernacle. And when you get prayer back in your tabernacle... You're able to stand and look at that mountain and say, Mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Mountain, you've ruled my life. You've ruled my joy. You've ruled my marriage. You've ruled my children. You've ruled my life. But mountain, I am putting prayer back in my tabernacle. 